Life is good in Dorking right now. In their last four games, the Wanderers have won two and drawn two, conceded just one goal and been a missed penalty and a refereeing error away from taking all 12 points. So the visit of Rochdale doesn't unduly phase Mark White's side, despite the former League Two club sitting a few spots above mid-table Wanderers in the league. The Dale have had a sinking feeling of late, for they were in League One playing the likes of the mighty Charlton Athletic just three years ago, but upheaval in the boardroom and a rotation of different managers played a part in their fall into non-league football, and while they're hopeful of getting back up, perhaps via the playoffs this season, under current gaffer Jim McNulty, Rochdale have got to get used to their new surroundings, for 102 years of league football will not help them when it comes to visiting Meadowbank. What we're going to do in this game, the plan is really simple. We're going to play the same way we played against Barnet down here last season um, and somebody else down here. We're going to play man for man all over the pitch and we're going to ask this lot to defend. OK, we're going to ask them to defend from all areas, all over the pitch. We're going to put balls in the box. Obviously, National League and all the rest of it, we'll have to battle like fuck. You have to roll your sleeves up and understand you've got a fucking battle in this division. Right, that's how it is. We've got prowess in this team, right? And we have shown fucking proper class and stability to get the results. We, we was fucking out with the washing, going away to the likes of Oldham and Halifax, which are fucking hard to go to, and fucking rebuilding and being stable and getting unlucky, then getting points. And, and then we've got to win a couple of fucking games and it, you, we're in a great position now to fucking really go for teams fucking jugulars, right? We want to force as many long throws and corners as we can and bully this team, right? We've shown serious bollocks to get a few results back to back, like serious bollocks. So uh, it is sort of mind games, really. The boys convincing them that they're world beaters, uh, convincing them they're, they're in a great position, which they are in a much better position. Um, convincing them that they're going to feel fucking great. Like, people lock into that shit, you know, we all do. If I think about how great I'm going to feel tonight, I'll perform better today. But it's just a tough, tough league, man. Tough, tough league. Um, and I'm learning all the time. You know, small squad this lot, small management team, full time. And I'm, I'm seeing that like, those synergies like where, in order to be able to afford to be full time, it's a skeleton situation. That's what I'm seeing. So I'm looking at that thinking, that's where we might be. I'm uh, a Rochdale fan for probably over 40 odd years. Uh, I've followed them up and down the country, highs and lows. Uh, the media thing, uh, quite a while now. I think it's been about eight years or so, maybe, maybe a little bit longer. Um, did it during COVID as well, which is very interesting times. But prior to that, I was a fan. It's a volunteer role. We're a volunteer based club. And uh, yeah, it's been a joy following them up and down the country. I'm always coming with my granddad. I, I love him to bits. Henderson, Ian Henderson, love him to bits. He's a favourite player by far. Got convinced to try and be a Man United fan from my granddad, but then me, me dad uh, turned me around to, to be a Dale fan, yeah. For the best. Yeah, um, for the best. Well, initially when, when we got the relegation, it was a low, but then the more I thought about it, um, personally, um, I like non-league football. I watched the, you know, lower, I used to play lower non-league football. I love watching non-league football. So when I, when I sort of got over the initial disappointment of the relegation, and then I thought, you know, National League, new grounds, you know, experiencing days like today, really, which you won't get at Sunderland or Sheffield Wednesday, you know. Probably at an all-time low in many respects, but the feeling around the club at the minute is is that it's a lot better than what it has been in recent years, even though we got relegated last season. So it seems like we're kind of consolidating a little bit. At the bottom, we've had a we had a really good five-year spell in the League One and then we got relegated to League Two and it just went been bad from there. Got relegated to National League and it's just the worst it's ever been. Mark seems to think that Rochdale are playing an old-fashioned 4-4-2 system, which isn't quite what he's been planning for. So it remains to be seen if the Wanderers need to react accordingly. Leave him in there, George, leave him off, leave him off. Within seconds of the start, Tyrese Sinclair falls over quite convincingly, much to Mark's chagrin. It's a dive, Joel, by the way, a fucking great dive. Just so you fucking know. Good. Good. 
Good and good fucking tactics. Well George! Done, like that. Despite Harry and Jason both valiantly trying to take one for the team, Sinclair's free kick lands squarely in Dan Gallagher's face. James McShane narrowly misses the crossbar as Dawking take control of the game. Set. Straight line! Straight line! Straight line! Coming on, Dan! Coming on, Dan! Lock on! Lock on! Go on, Tommy, and step. The threat from Rochdale is currently only in the form of counter-attacking, with Harvey Gilmore leading the charge. Ball, boys. Jimmy Keohane drives the ball wide as he gives a hint of what Rochdale can do if Dawking don't lock up at the back. They're just playing on the counter. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's like in open play, if yeah. we're a man short, they're good at it, you yeah. know what I mean? It's all down that side, by the way, as well. Like, yeah. The Wanderers remain on the offence, but when James McShane overpresses, Rochdale drive forwards again. Deliver! 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 Oh, fucking hell. Bob 20! Lock on! This is where Lock we need to switch on. on in these areas. Lock on! Just past, Mac has overpressed yeah. it and he's passed round him. That's where we need to be set in those areas. 13 on Seb, isn't it? <laughs> Cairo Mitchell puts the ball on a plate for Tyree Sinclair, but George Frankham intervenes before the waiter can deliver the plate to Sinclair's table. Of bigger concern is Bobby Joe Taylor, who's lying on the floor like a man who knows his game is over. You've got to go on. Bobby's fat. What happens? I'm sure I'm running back, right? Can you tell him I'm struggling as well? Yeah. Seb says that he's struggling as well. Not like, it's not quite gone, but it's literally like, if I had a couple more sprints here, Where? that was just about to go, bing! Which bit? Right in the middle. Like, it's, I've not felt it do the electric bit, but it is like yeah. now on the verge. Seb? Are you no good to carry No on? good, no, no, definitely, because I know it's just going to fucking... Bob's no good. Go down. Tell Seb to go down. Are you alright to carry on, though? What are we doing? Seb's good to carry on for now. I don't... Well, ask him what uh, the Bobby, fucking yeah. matter is. Seb, Seb, Seb! No, boys, relax, oh, man. Relax, I don't yeah. want to stop running over yeah, injured. I want him over there, lads! Seb, Seb, stay there, what's wrong? Huh? Seb? Just let us know, yeah? It's not gone, man. It's not gone. Bob's hamstring is on the verge of popping or snapping, tearing, whatever. He's done. And Mark also has to figure out what to do about Seb Bowman. Seb's fucked. Okay. But I'm just thinking, even if you go on and we take you back off, that might be better than putting Steve okay. out of position. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. What I mean, do you as think? long as you know I can't do 100% for this long. No, no, no I'm but thinking we'll take you back. To... I'm thinking I'll take you back off or put you number nine or something stupid like that. What do you reckon? Well, I'd, I'd... I'm more just going to have to ease myself in though, I'm not going to be able to go. Because yeah, no. even if I'm on that long, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to pull my hamstring again. I really don't. You've got to go win back, it's your new role anyway. Tom, you're going to, have, you're going to go that side, okay? Yeah, stay this side. You're going on, mate. You're going on. Press him! Press him! We've got some question marks over Tyree Sinclair's ability to stay on his feet under pressure and we'd definitely advise him to try not to fall over in front of Mark. Get up you fucking fanny! Get up you fanny! You're a good player! Stay on your fucking feet! Right, settle down boys. Straight off. Straight off. Look, the game's on script, right? The game's on script, isn't it? It's what we said, yeah? The game is what we said it is. Give them a plus one, they'll pass. Don't give them a plus one. Their game's cancelled out. We've seen that lots. I think we need to score two here to win this game. Right? But two gets us three nice points. So listen, great half, but if we're prepared to do the same again, prepared, we can get three points here. And then we can go away saying, Rochdale, fucking hell, expected more. 
right? That, that's where this should be. But you don't win nothing in here. You don't win fuck all in these team talks. But I've got to see it honestly, you're doing a great job. Don't switch off when they're on the ball. Mark wants Jason Pryor to bring the attacking midfielders into play and for the wingers to keep crossing the ball. Meanwhile, we'd love to know what the Rochdale game plan is for the second half, at least outside of Sinclair falling over again. A minute into the half, Adam Clayton's corner gives Rochdale their biggest opening of the game so far. See, Seager, be aware of the free. Dorking have a chance to find Jason Pryor from a dead ball here. Oh, it's a chance, by the way. Half cross, half shot. Dorking are once again on top of their opponents, and yet they still haven't quite found a way to test Louis Muldern. The next spell of pressure might just remedy that. Behind them, behind them, behind them. That's the one. Back on the Oh, mate. Put it in there. Go on, Joshy. Oh, oh, yes! What was he going to fucking do? Why is he going to fall over? Why is he going to fall over? Why is he going to fall over there, What's he going to do? I can't believe he's booked in track, by the way. Shit. I cannot what believe. What is he going to do? I cannot believe he's booked in track. Fucking hell, man. It's mental. We've been pretty hard on Rochdale's winger for falling over too easily, so we're going to have to be pretty honest here and say Josh Taylor's fall doesn't quite match the contact. Ebanks Landell has taken a risk, but he's pulled his foot and hand out of the equation just as Josh has fallen over. It's probably the dangled leg that earns the midfielder a yellow card. Dorking are just going to have to resort to shooting from open play on, if they're to take the lead. Don't win that! No! Go on, drive! Relax, relax! Tom Blair does exactly what Dorking needed him to do, to drive forwards and figure, I might as well hit this at goal and see if it goes in. Which it does, emphatically, flying past the goalkeeper's right hand and nestling inside the post. What a fucking goal that is. They come on for that now, in this game, in this game. Dorking Wanderers have always had a tendency to attack first and defend later, even in a winning position. But against a Rochdale side that's shown a propensity for countering like a backgammon board, that might not be so smart. Got to foul him. Dan's going to get booked there. Back stick! Back stick! Dan Pivers is going to get booked here. Dan Pivers is going to get booked. Coach Dino is concerned that Dan Pivers is going to have to get booked if he has to cover the counter attacks. Oh. Done fucking well there. Uh, yeah. Rochdale is starting to string yeah. some moves together. And then get, and then get, you correct, yeah. Yeah. He's gone for the ball, by the way. Yeah, he's a yellow, but he has gone Good for the ball. Good decision, that. Good decision. As Dino predicted, Pibus has had to take one for the team there. Safe. Then I'll have to go over the wall, man. Um, At half time, Mark said Dorking would probably need two goals to win this game, and they're certainly playing like they were listening. Oh, Sage. Oh. 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 Mega drive. Oh, no. We've got extra two. Five. Five. He's got five at the minute, I think. We're moving into stoppage time, and with Matt Briggs on to stretch the Rochdale defence, Dorking are hoping to seal it without the injury time tension. Along with everybody else inside Meadowbank, Josh Taylor knows he's just Mr. Golden, guilt edged, wonderful opportunity. The thing is, is he going to live to regret that or are we just trying to add intention just to crank it up for the last couple of minutes and to keep you watching for the YouTube algorithm? Oi, oi, get, oi, get us. Yeah, watch out for the runners here. Yeah, yeah. 
They won't do direct, they'll look, yeah. they'll look for little pills. Five. Tell them a couple of minutes. Is that it, Ross, yeah? Five, as we've seen, yeah. Still a minute left. This is going to be more than five, because you've got this as well. Could have scored about five goals. Yeah. With normal time done, Rochdale drop a free kick into the box and they see the ball land at the feet of Ethan Ebanks Landell. He then sweeps a volley into the bottom corner to level the score for Rochdale and break Dorking's resolve. Could have scored about five goals in this game. Forward! 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 Do it, Chase! Both teams intend to spend injury time looking for a winner. Gotta work! Oh, yeah. He's off! He's off! He's off! Back four. Yeah, he's off! Yeah. yeah, he's off! Yeah. What are you thinking in terms of a back four? You've got Josh and Mackie in the field. Tyrese Sinclair has spent as much time on the floor as he has running around, and this time he forces Dan Pibus to make a challenge that ends his game early. Rochdale were already enthused enough to seek out a winner, and with Pibus off the pitch, that enthusiasm has only increased. Have you told him he's done the minimum, mate? understandably confused as to why the goal was not ruled out for offside, given that Ian Henderson knocked it in from two yards out. Sadly for the home side, Cal Kennedy was keeping the veteran attacker on. Well done, mate. Thanks, well mate. See your place. Well Cheers, well Cheers, Cheers, boys. Well done, Cheers, mate. Well done, mate. Well done, Cheers. Mate. Thank you, mate. Cheers, mate. Well done, mate. All the best for the season. Stop me! Fucking kill a game off, man! Fucking hell. For him to be on side, our player's got to be on the line board line. So I hope you're sure. I hope you're certain. Because I don't think 100%. Listen, boys, listen, tune in to me. There's, there's obviously nothing I can say. There's nothing I can say. We've got a fucking centre forward wing back after fucking 15 minutes. They've literally celebrated like they won the World Cup because that's how much they shouldn't have won that game. We could have scored during the 90, honestly, seven goals. Six or seven goals. The only bit that can be criticised is obviously the final third. We've had some great chances during that game to put that to bed. And if, if you're a neutral, if, you watch, if you've watched about 100 fucking million games like me, if you're watching that as a neutral, you're thinking, they ain't put this game to bed, it was one of them games. Ain't put to bed. The chances, see, Josh, obviously your one's a big one. It's a massive, huge smash and grab. We've done everything we need to do defensively. Okay, that's the bottom line. We're hanging on for dear life, we can't make any subs. I feel bad for us today. To be honest with you, I feel a little bit bad for us, but I'm not fucking one of those to feel sorry for myself, but I do feel, you know, management team got no subs. Can't make any subs. Loads of boys injured going into it. That's the bottom line. Is he offside, Cal? He's saying you played him on. No, he's, he's on top. He's on top. Yeah. He's, he's crossing behind. It is literally fucking done. There's nothing we can do about it, okay? All right, boys. Smash and grab, I'm afraid. It's fucking... I'm saying sorry, so Lino. He, he said he was on site. He was like, he was on site. Appreciate guys. All right, no worries. Thank I think it works for me. Cheers, boys. Thanks for watching Bunch of Amateurs. You can get much longer versions of these episodes on YouTube memberships and Patreon, and you also get loads of behind the scenes stuff as well. So check us out there if you want to see more of Mark White and the Dorkin players.